Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 132nd episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and to start off, I wanted to talk about evasion, jailbreaking, and iOS. So first up, earlier this week, Apple did release iOS 6.1.3 to the public. Now the firmware was issued to not only correct the major lock screen security flaw that was discovered in iOS 6.1, which was also present in 6.1.2, but the new release also patches the evasion jailbreak. Unfortunately, when iOS 6.1.3 Beta 2 was released to developers, Planet being discovered that one of the key vulnerabilities utilized by Evasion had been patched. So we have been expecting the public release of 6.1.3 to patch the Evasion jailbreak. However, we just didn't know when it would be released. Well, it turns out it was released exactly one month after Apple released iOS 6.1.2 to the public. And in addition to addressing the passcode security flaw and the untethered jailbreak, 6.1.3 1.3 also brings improvements to the Maps app for Japanese users. Well, I'm sure most of you may be asking, what does this mean for the future of jailbreaking? I'm here to tell you that there will be untethered jailbreaks in the future. There's no doubt about that. The question, again, is not whether they'll be released, but when they'll be released. And because 6.1.3 was such a minor release and didn't bring much to the table, the evaders definitely won't put the time into discovering new exploits and new vulnerabilities to create another untethered jailbreak for the firmware. They'll most likely wait until the next major release, which unfortunately probably won't happen until Apple releases iOS 7 to the public. So I'll discuss that in more detail in just a second. But first, you still can jailbreak iOS 6.1.3 using what's known as a tethered jailbreak, and then from there you can convert that tethered jailbreak into a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak. It's important to realize that in order to jailbreak 6.1.3, you have to use a red snow workaround and and as most of you already know, Red Snow only includes tethered support for the iPhone 4, the iPhone 3GS, and the fourth generation iPod Touch. So if you have a newer device like the iPhone 5, the fourth generation iPad, or even the iPhone 4S, you will not be able to jailbreak on 6.1.3. So definitely stay on 6.1.2 or lower if at all possible. Another thing to take into consideration is that you can't update from lower firmware to a higher firmware that still isn't the latest release. So what I mean by that is you can't update your iPhone 4S, for instance, from 6.1.1 to 6.1.2. You just can't do it because Apple no longer signs iOS 6.1.2, so you would have to upgrade to 6.1.3. And unfortunately, there isn't a downgrade method available for devices using an A5 processor or higher. So if your device is powered by an A5, an A5X, an A6, or an A6X processor, unfortunately, you will not be able to downgrade from 6.1.3 to 6.1.2, even if you have your SHSH blobs saved. And yes, there was a method discovered to downgrade select A5 based devices from a higher iOS 5 firmware to a lower iOS 5 firmware, but unfortunately that does not work on iOS 6. So if you have a newer device that's on 6.1.3, unfortunately you're stuck there and you'll just have to wait until the next major untethered jailbreak is released. Because again, Red Snow uses what's known as the Lime Rain exploit, which is a hardware based exploit. And that's how users are able to utilize the utility to jailbreak their older devices because again, Again, Apple cannot patch hardware-based exploits unless they release newer devices, which obviously they've done since GeoHot discovered the Lime Rain exploit back in 2010. So I know I got sidetracked for a second, but back to my main point, if you have an iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, or a fourth generation iPod Touch, you can jailbreak with Red Snow on 6.1.3. It will just be a tethered jailbreak, which means that you will have to use Red Snow every time you need to reboot your iDevice if you want to regain full functionality. And what I mean by that is if you want to use your Cydia tweaks, if you want to use Cydia, or even some of the main stock iOS applications, you will unfortunately have to plug it into your computer via your USB cable and rerun a certain part of Red Snow to get it to boot up into its tethered state. Now, yes, you can install what's known as a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak using a Cydia package, and essentially what that will do is allow you to reboot your device with limited functionality. And a lot of people ask me, well, what's the point of a semi-untethered jailbreak? Essentially, it acts as your life Lifeline, if your device dies and you absolutely have to reboot it and you have to turn it back on, then you can do so again with limited functionality. Now back to iOS 6.1.3 and the future of jailbreaking. Like I stated earlier in this video, Planet being discovered that one of the five key exploits utilized by Evasion was patched in iOS 6.1.3 beta 2. And he said that, quote, if they patch most of the bugs, then we're starting from scratch. 
and plan on being said that before 6.1.3 is finalized and released to the public. And essentially that means that they will indeed develop a jailbreak for future iOS firmwares and for future iOS based devices, but at the time they didn't know just how many of the exploits Apple would patch. And as it turns out, Musclenerd tweeted earlier this week after 6.1.3 was released and he highlighted that in Apple's release notes for the new firmware, four out of six of the security fixes in iOS 6.1.3 pertain to the evasion jailbreak. Now, unfortunately, it's not known how many of those exploits are considered major exploits or key exploits by the evaders, but at least four of the vulnerabilities used by evasion have been patched. So in review, yes, there will be an untethered jailbreak in the future. It might not be for a while. If you can stay on a lower iOS 6 firmware, such as 6.0.1 or even 6.1.2, then you definitely should do so because you can still use evasion to jailbreak your device. Just be sure to stay away from updating because if you do update one of your newer iDevices, you cannot go back no matter what. And if you happen to update your iPhone 4, your iPhone 3 Jazz, or your fourth generation iPod Touch, you can jailbreak using Red Snow, and I'll have a link to my detailed and in-depth tutorial down below in the more info, so just be sure to check it out if you want to jailbreak iOS 6.1.3. All right, moving on from jailbreaking, according to a new report from DigiTimes, next generation iPhone parts and components could begin shipping as early as the end of May. Now, if accurate, the forthcoming iPhone, unofficially dubbed the iPhone 5S, may be released within the third quarter of this year, aligning with previous reports stating that the iPhone 5S will be available in the late summer to fall time frame. And similar to past rumors, DigiTimes unnamed sources claim that the iPhone 5S will be powered by an upgraded processor, which is expected of every iPhone refresh, and the device is said to feature an improved camera with a higher megapixel count. And other reports from earlier in March suggest that Apple's manufacturing partners, namely Foxconn, are preparing to ramp up production for the iPhone 5S. Apple's next generation smartphone is also rumored to be equipped with a fingerprint scanner, NFC technology, and possibly even wireless charging. And if you want more details on the iPhone 5S, just be sure to check out the article that I have linked to down below in the more info. And of course, as most of you already know, right now there isn't much on the next generation iPhone, but we expect to see a plethora of leaks closer to the device's announcement. So of course, just be sure to stay tuned to this series, my website, Best Tech Info, and my YouTube channel in general. I will keep you guys completely covered on Apple and the next generation iPhone. All right, and that's it for this episode. For the question of the day, let me know down below in the comment section, what would make you upgrade to the iPhone 5S? I know previously a lot of people I've spoken with said that they will not upgrade to the iPhone 5S from the iPhone 5 if it's simply a minor internal processor and camera upgrade. So what would make you switch from the iPhone 5 to the iPhone 5S or the next generation iPhone, whatever it ends up being called? Just be sure to let me know down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. Also, it's not too late to enter into my 100 dollar Amazon gift card giveaway. Just be sure to rate this video up if you liked it, hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos, and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section, and once your comment's posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. I am concluding my giveaway soon though, so just be sure you don't miss your chance to enter. To be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me in one of your circles inside of Google+, and until next time, this is how you see you, signing out.